here, something about May 1st will be the wrap-up date. And yeah. what does that refer to? Uh, I suppose uh, that it has reference to the uh, complete uh, takeover of the uh, by the new government. Uh, maybe just uh, maybe a tad. I can just real quickly rehearse what what has been done or what's being done. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> it goes all the way back to the Civil War. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that we that the whole country has been under military occupation ever since the Civil War. Uh, uh, the, it, the, the, the war has been mislabeled. It was not uh, a war uh, between the states. It was a war of the federal government against the state. And so as a result of that uh, uh, thing that went on there, uh, the whole country came under military occupation, and we've operated that way since. Now, some of you perhaps have listened to Drake Bailey, and uh, Drake uh, had been involved in this for a very long time. Uh, but uh, also myself, well, probably about seven or eight years ago, one of my uh, high-level uh uh, CIA sources told me that the U.S. Army had, in fact, created a full-blown interim government, and they were stationed in uh, West Virginia. So, uh, and they were simply there waiting until such a time that it would be necessary for them to step forward. At this point in history, they have stepped forward, and then uh, there was a certain amount of concern uh, that they were worried that the people might think that this is a uh, military coup. But, you know, that could be, that's nowhere close to it. It's not a military coup. It's, in fact, a correction. So uh, they went into operation. Uh, 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 near the start of 2015. And there were certain things that had to happen in order to be recognized as a valid government. Number one, they had to create a national currency. And, but they lacked gold. They didn't have any gold with which they could comply with Basel III. And so there had to be some things done. And so in consequence of that, the Chinese elders along about April... 2015 leased 100 billion in gold to the new republic, and they also gave them 385 billion in cash for operational expenses. Now these are things that uh, I know about. I was informed of these things uh, by my friends in the international. I said, "Okay, here's what's happened." All right, now. Now that they had the gold so they could create a new currency that would be Basel III compliant, they moved forward and they created uh, what, what is known as Treasury Reserve Notes. Now, these, these particular instruments are for use at the government level. But they're not on the street. However, they had been trading uh, in the international uh I mean, they were, they were being traded in Europe all through the summer and, and Japanese stock markets, Forex and everything. They were trading on them in the fall, so we know it's valid. Uh, so we, know, we know it's a good currency. Now, for the for the money on the street, the money that you and I would be using, they have created what's known as United States notes much like what President Kennedy had created way back in uh, uh, 1963. Some of you have studied, studied that history, you know what I'm talking about. So in any event, uh, those currencies uh, will be the currencies that will come out and be used uh, to facilitate uh, the uh, changeover. And, and they are being used. They're already in the banks. 
uh, we have been really surprised that they have not uh, instituted those things, al- that they haven't released those funds already. But I see the wisdom in what they're doing. And so when this, when this interim government first entered the picture, it, it was said that, that uh, General Carter Ham would be the uh, interim president, and then they run into certain roadblocks, uh, most of which were centered with uh, the problems in the Pentagon. They overcame those problems. And so at that point, uh, the Marine Corps General Dunford, they sent a reply out there for all you Marines. But in any event, uh, General Dunford (laughs) was selected to be the uh, uh, interim uh, president because he was, in fact, he was appointed by Congress to be the Joint Chief. They got rid of Martin Dempsey finally, thank God for that. But in any event, uh, 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 General Dunford then filled the role at that point as the uh, interim president. And then they got to thinking, apparently, and so they changed course a bit, and they they went back and referenced what had happened with the Nixon administration. Some of you old enough to remember that. Remember Nixon, <laughs> Bill Agnew came in oh, as yeah. uh, president, vice president, and then uh, Agnew got convicted or got some felonies thrown at him, so he stepped down. They brought in, uh, oh, what was the name, Nelson Rockefeller, uh, Apparently, Nelson Nelson passed away from unknown causes. <laughs> In any event, uh, so so what they did to fill uh, the vice presidency was they called in the Speaker of the House, Gerald Ford, because he's third in line. See, so that when Nixon stepped down, we would have an un, uh, we, would, we would have a unelected. President, so we have the precedent for it, and that's why I'm that's why I'm building up to here just to give you a little bit of comprehension about how some of these things have worked. And so, anyway, at this juncture, uh, Dunford has stepped down from being the interim president, and he's going to fill the slot as the vice president. And then, guess who's going to be the interim president? The Speaker of the House. We see we have the precedent. Yeah, we have the precedent already in our history. So, so that hopefully the people would not think that there's something amiss with what's going on here. And so we have that uh, uh, with us. And uh, so that, that, that's that's the lineup. Now I did watch. I was hoping he would make announcements. He did not make any announcements, but. Uh, Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House, uh, did in fact make a speech the other day to a bunch of young people there. And I was hoping he would make announcements. He did not. But what he did do, I watched him. And <laughs> you got to understand the psychology of what's going on here, folks. What he did was he started out his speech, which only lasted out maybe 15 or 20 minutes. He started out his speech, he will talk about this or that, and then he reached into his coat pocket. He pulled out a pocket version of the Constitution, just like all the patriots carry around. Mm-hmm. He, pulled out, he pulled out that pocket version of the U.S. Constitution and held it up to the young people to see. He held it up high so they could see what he had in his hand. And then he said, I took an oath to this Constitution. And he said, and I will honor my oath. Now, that was was unexpected, to say the least. But in any event, uh, uh, he made that point. And that was an important point to make. And so uh, I can see the psychology of what he was doing there, even though he didn't make any particular announcements about the New Republic, he did demonstrate to those young people that, in fact, he was going to honor his oath that he had made to the Constitution. Now, that's a very significant event. 
very significant. I, I was ever so proud of him to do that. So uh, we do have uh, things uh, uh, changing. We have things on the move and so forth, uh, the results of which will be very beneficial to the American people. We have a new government. And uh, for those of you who understand uh, the SARA Act, 2000, that will, in fact, uh, begin to be executed upon uh, with this new administration. So we have uh, we have great prospects here of things to come. Is the uh, new government that's coming in associated with RUSA? Not, not that I know of. You know, they... Okay. But hey, listen, we do have some other people that are waiting... Okay. So, okay. <laughs> All well, right. Wait, wait. There's a follow-up to the, the reason I asked that question was to get Quickly, to this please. question. So if things are going to change quite radically, it sounds, um, around May 1st, does that mean that um, the status correction to become American nationals and UCC filings to become secured party creditor are are kind of uh, moot now? Absolutely not. Oh. The, the things we're doing in commercial redemption will stay the same. The only problems that you won't have to deal with is IRS and tax problems. But, but what about RS, corrupt judges? They'll be gone. When the, bar oh, says, yeah. when the Bar Association, which I did, when, when you take down the bar associations, and uh, all the attorneys will either have to renounce their bar oath. You know, they're taking oath to the bar, which is actually the Temple Bar in the uh, city of London. So, so they will have to either renounce that and become lawyers, but they can't be attorneys anymore. So, uh, with, with those changes on the horizon, we expect to see, you know, very, very good results. Okay, so so keep doing the status correction and the secured party creditor stuff. Yeah, uh, again, those are on the commercial side. Commerce, listen, commerce rules the planet. I don't care what country you're in. Commerce rules the planet, not some not some law from some country and all those kind of things. And so, so all the things that you're learning about. Uh, in commerce and with commercial redemption, accepted for value and all those kind of things, they stay the same. Uh, even though we have a new currency, the only difference between our new currency and the Federal Reserve notes is that our new currency will not be used at interest. The new currency is is substance back, and a lot of people I don't get all the crazy stuff out here on the internet. The Federal Reserve notes were always backed by uh, the gold. They always were. And the only problem that came from the use of the Federal Reserve notes, which was in fact an international currency, the United States was the only country on the planet that did not have its own national currency. And so we were using Federal Reserve notes as our currency, but every time we would use it, there was interest attached to it, which which created what people call the national debt. It's not a national debt, it's a federal debt. And so in consequence of those things, uh, we, we've had this you know, millstone hung around our neck through the use of the Federal Reserve notes. Now the new currency that comes out is going to be exactly the same variety of instruments with the exception that there is no interest attached to the use of it. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so so All right. the treasury will actually have some some money that we're dealing with now. The new treasury is located in Nevada on the Indian reservation. Huh? Okay. Well, the Indian reservations have free trade zones. 